There are countless economic indicators, some are more important than others. We should look at as many as we possibly can and then make our own judgment. Today we have witnessed what we all knew was coming. Another yield curve has inverted as expected. This is the predominant recession indicator for traders and technical analysis. Stocks fell and now the market needs some soft whispers from the Fed to give it a boost. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at the biggest recession session signal since 2007. I have so many charts to show you today, it's going to make your head spin. So take a seat and let's begin by taking a look at the markets. Here you can see on the right hand side what has happened right now. We could see that the Dow Jones is down over 300 points. This has been shown to us as being a typical day after the market is spooked about something. But of course, as we have seen over the last several months, the market can be very resilient as long as the Federal Reserve commits to easy money. And this has shown us every single time in the afternoon that the market comes up higher. Now, as I record this video, it's after 2 p.m. here, so I'm not sure if it's able to get back into positive territory, but perhaps the plunge protection team will come up and boost these numbers. We'll see what happens. Regardless, I could show you the charts going back a little bit, maybe over the last six months, just to give you an idea of where things have gone. We can see clearly that since the end of December, the market has moved up quite a bit. But during this period of time, the economic indicators, the real indicators, are still showing Showing weakness, even though we've seen a lot of the stock markets retrieve part of their losses, or in some cases all of their losses throughout this period. So we'll see how it all plays out. I'm going to show you some more details. Looking at this, the sea of red has been experienced once again. Pretty much every single country has seen red today, and that gives us an idea of what's to come. This gives us the insight that the market doesn't like when we have bad news. News. Part of that bad news is explained in the first paragraph here. Stocks dropped on Friday as jitters over the global economy were sparked by a dreadful manufacturing data, as well as the Federal Reserve's cautious outlook on the U.S. economy. Wow, could it be possible that the Federal Reserve is a little bit cautious? Well, most certainly they should be, but they're not paying attention to the real factors. I mean, they look at the core PCE inflation rate, which is absolutely nonsense. We know that already. But of course, this is far beyond that. We are looking at the yield curve inverting. And this has happened multiple times. If you look at different yield curves, you see in this case, this happens to be the predominant one, such an important one that traders, that technical analysis keeps an eye on. And here we go. The bond market is flashing its biggest recession sign since before the financial crisis. The spread between the three month and the 10 year treasury notes has fallen below 10 basis points for the first time since 2007. Here we go. Now, in saying this, it doesn't mean that tomorrow there's going to be a recession, that what we are seeing in the markets is going to continue for the next few months. No, but it tells us that this happens every single time, time after time after time, this occurs and then there's a recession that follows. An inverted yield curve where short term yields are higher than the longer term counterparts is considered a reliable recession signal and by reliable they should be a little bit more choosy with their words because it has a perfect relationship. And I'll show you the chart itself here. You can see that it dipped below zero and that is very worrisome right now for all of those who pay attention. Now, as I said, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. The fact that it crossed below and the yield curve invert itself doesn't mean anything. But what we have seen historically over and over and over and over again is that when this happens, a recession follows. Mortgage rates just tanked thanks to the Fed and they could go even lower. The average rate on the popular 30-year fix had been sitting at 4.4, fell to 4.34, the lowest in over a year and 19 basis points lower than a year ago. I think it's important to note what they mentioned at the bottom point. Looking at the 30-year fix rate on a $300,000 mortgage, every 25 basis point move down means a savings of $50 on a monthly payment. But of course, it works in the opposite direction. So that would be 
$50 more on the mortgage payment. We are seeing today, even though the interest rate had remained where it was, 2.25 to 2.5, still it has had an impact on mortgage rates. And you can see here that when it went to 5% essentially, and then ever since it has moved down, there has been a loosening of the lending restrictions in many countries around the world, including China. We have seen the reserve requirements decreasing. We are witnessing here a stealth stimulus that has been created, but will it be enough to sustain one of the biggest bubbles in history, the real estate bubble? We'll see, and I will, of course, be tracking it here on the channel. I want to pay attention specifically to the PMI here, and we are looking at this decreasing over the period of, let's say, the last year or so. It's not just the last month or the last few months. You can see the green line specifically, the U.S. manufacturing PI has been declining ever since. That has been shown time and time again. I've been tracking it here. You've seen it in the news, I'm sure. Over time, this gets worse, all because of the conditions that are behind it. No, it's not because of any particular stock. It's not because of just oil prices. It's not because of some tensions between the US and China. It's everything put together and that has a dramatic impact on what we have seen. Take a look at the German bonds. The 10 year has actually gone into the negative right now. So you're gonna put money in for 10 years and you're going to get a negative return. How does that sound? Does that sound beneficial to you? Well, I don't think so. And this is not the only one. We've seen Switzerland, we've seen so many of them actually. There are trillions upon trillions worth that are trading at a negative yield. I don't think an actual individual investor would ever buy one of these. That doesn't make any sense to me, but perhaps it is the case. However, what we can see today is that there doesn't seem to be any shortage of things out there, different products, fixed income, and so on at a negative yield. That's when you know you have reached a desperation level. This is Germany's manufacturing PMI, and over the last few months, essentially right at the end of the year, the PMI has fallen dramatically, and we have seen this go on, and not just Germany as well. I'll show you this in just a second here, looking at France's manufacturing PMI, essentially mirroring the exact same numbers, looking at France's services PMI, the exact same situation. Have no fear, because Larry Kudlow suggests to everybody that there's no recession in insight right now and we must believe him because he would only tell the truth he would never lie to anybody the federal reserve is our best friend as i mentioned we're all gonna get to go on a picnic with them we're gonna get to go out and have coffee with jerome powell it's gonna be exciting it's gonna be fantastic they want to help us they want to make sure that everybody is taken care of this time is different and any other lullaby you love hearing right before you get tucked in to sleep. Well, that's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel, so I do appreciate that very much. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything that you need. You can get all the details at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. If you haven't seen this video already, it's talking about Steve Eisman from The Big Short. He just placed his next big short, so click on it and I will see you there.